my life for the last 35 years has been organized from the Tuesday after Labor Day to the second Sunday of May. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's like I'm very conscious of the school year because that's how you organize your life. <laughs> So I, I came to the United States conscious of my Africanness and therefore conscious of my blackness. I became conscious of women's studies and became a feminist here at Rutgers. We seem to have found a way to be supportive and collegial without necessarily getting into everybody's personal business. I mean, I. People, people know how to be supportive colleagues, how to support your projects, how to allow you to teach what you need to teach. We'll read your papers um, and comment honestly on them. We'll come to your brown bag lunch. Um, we'll throw you a book party. I mean, you know, there's, there's that sense of a common purpose. If the systems that we've been living under don't work for us, what is different? What do we need to do? There is now a whole field of leadership studies, thinking through what makes a leader, how, how do you pick up, how do you communicate, how do you organize yourself, how do you practice, um, what is the difference, what are the gender differences? And there is an answer to that. There, is it? I, I, um, I, well, I, it's complicated, I, but you, you, think, you have to think about different communication styles, different organizational styles, respecting a different form of leadership. You see, historically, leadership, the concept has been a top-down one. Most of us who do leadership training are training us to think bottom-up leadership. You don't impose a structure. You figure out how to bring out organically who the people are. You have to think very differently about what you mean by leadership and very differently about what, how you think of community. I think the challenges for us in women's studies is, you know, the proverbial backlash. And we are facing it. And I think there's a, you know, in the same way as there's a backlash against African Americans, there's also, as we know, been a kind of backlash against women's studies. This usual story, you have to deal with the boring question of, you know, why not men's studies and men matter too. And we do an, a wonderful exercise, actually, with the fellows. We, give, we tell them ahead of time, think of a woman who you consider a leader. But you don't have to think about a political leader. It could be anybody, your grandmother village elder, a school teacher. Think of someone who has influenced your life, who has helped shape your life, or who you would like to emulate. Come and talk about them. We break it down. What is it about them that made them have the kind of influence and authority? Very often informal to begin with. And when you do that, you then manage to figure out the elements of effective leadership that matter to you. So we've constantly made them think about how different leadership looks when it's a woman and the different fates of leadership 